Hello, today's video is going to be about this very inexpensive portable, I think I'm going to call it a communications receiver, it's also a radio, the D808. Originally the name was XH Data, this one's called Shihua Don or something like this. Apparently it's the same manufacturer, same radio, and I'm impressed with how well this works. Um, had it just over a week, used it quite a lot. I've only charged the battery once when I got it and I haven't had to recharge it yet. I programmed in some channels. Um, some people say that when you remove the battery for any reason it loses power then all the channel memory is forgotten. I haven't tried that yet. So um, the radio I'm just going to show you quickly what it can do. There are plenty of other videos about how good it is. But uh, just a quick demonstration and some of the, the quirkier points that I've noticed with it. Um, one of those is when you start it with power on, if you were in SSB mode before, then of course it starts up in SSB mode, and that seems to take forever to load the software, it's really quite slow. So I try to switch back to AM, which is called normal on the display, before I turn it off, so that when I turn it on it comes on much faster. Um, it has a few quirks, um, how to set the timer, the sleep timer, which I don't need, and how to turn it off, things like that, you need to Google how to do that, it wasn't obvious to me. And some of the functions you have to perform when it's turned off and then turn it on, like enabling long wave mode, which by default is not enabled. Though little quirks, but it's, it's still worth it. And for the price, I got it when it was on a bit of a special offer price from the famous online supplier. I'm very happy with it. And it actually produces really good reception on, on low frequencies, which is difficult um, to make an antenna that works. The antenna, the long uh, telescopic antenna, is used on the uh, shortwave VHF and air bands <clears throat> and then internally there's a, um, a ferrite rod antenna that's used for medium wave and long wave. There's also an antenna socket here which allows an external antenna to be plugged in but only to connect to the whip. It doesn't connect to uh, the ferrite rod input which is used for medium wave and long wave so it's useless for that. So um, currently it's tuned to 1500 kilohertz, which is the only domestic broadcast station I've found on the air here in Munich in Germany. And it seems to receive it quite well, despite all of the noise which is generated domestically. I'm going to go outside onto the balcony and you'll see that the signal improves a lot. Well, it did last time I tried. So you can certainly hear something there. It works. And what I do enjoy doing is listening to the aircraft beacons, NDBs, and I'm going to try to, without dropping this device, switch to long wave. Oh, it's already on 338 kilohertz, which is one of the Munich beacons. Maybe you can hear the CW there. If I move outside the perimeter of the balcony, then I get a better signal. So MNW, so that's Munich Northwest Beacon. And there are there are four beacons for the four of those types of compass points, plus a few more as well that I can hear um, in the 300 to 400 kilohertz range, and it works really well. I do another v uh, video on a, a maritime direction finding receiver, which uses these beacons. So that's coming up soon. And of course, for the amateur bands, this is also great. What I'm going to do is press the. Uh, um, shortwave button, switch to shortwave, so that's 14 megs and then I'm going to change the mode to SSB and you see how long it takes. I press the SSB button and it's now loading up the, the software for the SSB demodulators I imagine and uh, it's taking quite a while. Oh, there we go, it's done it. And let me just uh, tune it up to 14074. It's the uh, FT8 frequency. And as you can probably hear, there's plenty of activity, plenty of signals. What I can do is um, put it close to my loop antenna here. Well, that's a loud one. <laughs> and uh, just by placing this telescopic antenna close to the loop, the signal strengths increase a lot. You can even touch it on like this to make contact and you really get a much stronger signal. This loop is currently tuned to 14 megahertz and you can see it, it does improve the signal strength. It's a nice easy way of tuning this loop by the way to hold the the D808 receiver next to it and then adjust the tuning capacitor for maximum noise. It's a quicker way than 
um, trying to minimize SWR on a transmitter or use even the uh, antenna analyzer. So it's a quick, cheap way <laughs> of uh, setting up a loop. One thing that is a bit quirky with this receiver is if I put my fingers on the back, on and off like this, if you listen to the signals, you can hear the frequency shifting. Because it's not doing it so much now that I want it to, but if I can go and find a CW signal lower down the band, it's a bit more pronounced, this effect. And of course that could be a little bit annoying. There we are. Oh. They always stop sending just when you... Here we are. I'm moving my fingers on and off at the back and you can hear the, the tone warbling, it's not constant because of the frequency shift produced. There we go. It's probably more pronounced if I use my whole hand. But it means that the, the casing for this receiver is not really screened and by doing this on the back you shift the frequency just by a few hertz but you can actually hear it if you're listening to CW, not so much with SSB. See if I can find another signal that transmits a bit longer. Of course there's nobody around. Oh there's one. Calling CQ. There we are. You can see me moving my fingers and you can hear the chirp produced in the CW signal so that's not really optimum but it's a very small quirk and, and what can you expect for the amount of money that they charge for this. Probably it's possible to shield it by opening it up and putting some shielding inside but I'm um, not sure if I can be bothered. Um, what else do I like about this receiver? There are, there are many <laughs> many things I like and a few quirks that I don't like but once you understand them then uh, it makes a really good communications receiver and it's extremely light. I cut off the strap because I don't like straps so I, as soon as I decided I'm not going to return it to the, send, the, the, the seller I just I cut the strap off and um, I made a little adapter to plug into this external antenna socket just a 3.5 millimeter jack plug with some coax and a BNC socket so I can plug in external antennas for HF and that works really nicely. So all in all I think it's a, a good little receiver it has its quirks or one of the other things that's quite noticeable is when you turn this uh, large tuning dial on the side then th you get this chuff chuffing sound it sounds a bit like a steam train with every single change I've got it going in one kilohertz steps at the moment and you can hear this chuff chuff is the AGC recovering after every frequency change apparently so the uh, the noise level dips down and comes up again which could be annoying compared to a more expensive receiver but then what can you expect for the price? So I'm happy with this and uh, I recommend it. It's a great way to get into listening to shortwave and, and low frequency and medium wave as well, of course. Covers the air bands very nicely, actually works. It doesn't have the 8.33 kilohertz channel spacing that's been introduced for air band AM, but um, it's still usable. And I, I think it's a great way perhaps for a beginner to get started listening to everything and also for people who need uh, a receiver they can just grab and take with them on a trip when they go for a walk or something, it's, it's ideal for something like that. So I'm happy with it. Anyway, please uh, comment below. Let me know what you think, your experiences or what else you'd like to see with this receiver or any other videos you want and then I'll make another video. Thank you. Remember to like and subscribe. Goodbye.